people are going to judge you, you know, or have some sort of assumptions about you the first second they see you. And, and really, you know, like persona is a mask, and the way you dress is also, you know, part of that mask. You sh one should paint their own mask. Well, I was actually born in Los Angeles. Um, but I started traveling at, you know, three months, going back and forth to France. I grew up in a very bohemian, you know, strange, eclectic um, world, which I guess to me was very normal. Not only was uh, my mother making clothing, but my father was also making um, short films. And so I always had lots of costumes. I would play a movie and I would reenact the whole film as I was watching it and I would constantly be doing costume changes. You know, I was basically raised by, um, by cross-dressers, so I feel very um, connected to that kind of like, over-the-top decadence. Uh, Vaginal Davis was sort of always around and kind of nannying me. Uh, so another um, drag queen performance artist, Glenn Meadmore, um, he was kind of funny because he was very tall. He's like almost like seven feet tall, and he was sort of he kind of looks like Lurch. And, and he was living with us, and he would sort of be my nanny. But I would be up all night with my friends, and he'd come into the room, and he'd be like, "You girls have to go to sleep." <laughs> and he'd be like so big and so frightening. <laughs> like I moved away from my parents at the age of nine, and I was living with my aunt and uncle, but they were very different from my family. And we didn't really relate, so I spent a lot of time. I spent most of my time like out in the streets with my friends, or sort of growing up on my own and having to, you know, push my own, you know. Going, finding my limits, and, and I think that also helped. Um, I think it was a really great education. I've never really been that much into fashion. Like I'm not, you know, I don't really, I don't necessarily love to go shopping. That's why I'm very grateful that I have a stepfather that makes great clothing because I don't have to go shopping. <laughs> you know, everybody always says to me, "Oh, your sweater's on backwards," but it, it doesn't matter which way you put it. It's backwards. It's awkward. It's like the neck is like this long. I mean, it's like it's, great. it's kind of. I just love it. Um, my mother calls it my Mercedes, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, she was uh, she was trying to convince Rick into doing something lighter with this peroxide sable, and he wasn't buying it. So I luckily got to take it. Grandfather started a sunglass company. At that time, it was called Victor Gros. They come from a place in France called Oyana, where they invented you know the first type of plastic. And um, my grandfather wanted to be a diplomat. Turns out his father died and he had to take over his company, which strangely enough happened to his son as well. And these are actually called Jackie O's because they were the glasses that he gave, he sold to Jackie when Kennedy was shot. I love the fact that I'm the only one who has it and that it, nobody else can possibly have it. And I just, I love the crazy hood. But it's also very fairy tale, very you know, fantastic. magical, you know, Lord of the Rings. Yes. And that I love too, because I'm very, I'm obsessed with, I've always been obsessed with magic. When I was a kid, I had a girlfriend, and we'd spend all of our time at the magic store, you know, and doing our tarot or whatever, making up spells and making potions. You know, I have, a, I have a few other tattoos which are really silly. So this was my first tattoo that really had deep meaning for me. And you know, you see it's like an eye and I want it to be like the eye of my heart chakra. You know, every year uh, Rick gives a, every season Rick gives a present to, mm -hmm. to, the, to his crew. Actually, you know what, I stole this one from my mom. So it says Michelle, but you can barely read it. Um, the rings I also stole from my mother because she wasn't wearing them anymore. And I thought, you know, you don't want to let that gold just hang around. I was really interested in Eastern philosophy already at a young age. I was really attracted to meditation and yoga. And um, so I read a lot of books on that. And I think also I was born, like I feel like when I was a kid, I was really old. I was kind of like the old mm. kid. And now as I'm getting older, I, I'm starting to find, be more like childish. I started in photography, but quickly found myself more in art, installation, painting, and performance. Instead of being super academic or conceptual about it, it's also finding a way to 
to say things in a way that touches you in this subconscious way or something that's universal. Like, you know, I'm very interested yeah. in like sacred geometry, which represents us in this very simple form. And I like to use that in my artwork to connect yeah. to people in that way. And there are some projects that form just by me, you know, sort of mucking around or seeing something that inspires me and I sort of play with it in my studio and then eventually it grows into a larger piece. I focus a lot on religion within my art is that I think that, um, I think it has a, it's really the foundation of our culture and our society, but at this point we've sort of, we sort of negated, we're like, oh well, you know, now we're scientists, we don't, we don't need to look at religion anymore, like, you know, that's just for some people, but it doesn't have to be for everybody, but I think it's inherent in so many things that we do. You know, they, they say, you know, you're not, you know, you don't allowed to talk about God and science, but ultimately what is science trying, what have we been always striving to do is find, you know, we keep making microscopes that are to go deeper and deeper into finding that, that substance, that, that final particle which is the basis of all the universe, you know, so, which is basically we're trying to find like what God is. I want, mm. I want to be critical, but critical in a way of, I'm still wanting to, you know, create peace, you know, and find a balance and say, okay, you know, to me the issue is that there isn't enough balance, right, so I'm not going to fight, you know, it's, I think it's so um, interesting mm -hmm. how, you know, Politicians are always like fighting for peace, and I mean those two words—they just don't make sense in a sentence, you know.